Okay. Uh, I think um, I've got everything set up correctly and uh, hopefully everybody can see me and hear me um, and let me know if anything uh, doesn't seem to be working or if there's any sort of technical difficulties. Um, I think uh, the plan is I'll probably talk for about uh, maybe 15 or 20, 30 minutes and then um, there will be time for questions as well at the end. So if anybody has any questions or anything, uh, please feel free to um, uh, ask them and, and uh, we'll go on from there. Um, just one moment, let me make sure that everything, okay. I think we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started um, and welcome to Major Monday. Um, so this is a uh, weekly event that we've been putting on where we talk about um, different majors every week and kind of what you can do at Green River College and what you can be doing um, um, you know, outside of Green River College and where you can be transferring to and all, all that, uh, uh, looking at specific majors. So today I'm going to talk about art and design. And uh, before I get started, I'll just introduce myself a little bit. My name is um, Zach Williams, and I may be many of your advisors already if you're thinking of studying art and design. Or if you're thinking, uh, planning in the future of uh, studying it, then I would be your advisor. Um, I've been with Green, at Green River College uh, as a full-time advisor for about three years now. Um, and not only am I an advisor at Green River College, I'm also a student at Green River College. I study our uh, cybersecurity bachelor's degree. And so if by chance you have any questions about that, then you could also um, ask me those questions as well. Uh, but as I mentioned today, we're going to be talking about art. So um, let's get started. The first thing that I just want to mention about art is art is a very, very important um, it's a very important topic of study at Green River College. Uh, we have many, many, many art classes um, and it's very popular. Many, many students are also um, learning this and, and going through these classes. Um, art uh, occupies one of the newest facilities on our campus. So we have um, a building called Salish Hall and the art department is uh, about half of this building and it's three levels. So. Um, everything, uh, those are for all of our art studios, our graphic design studios, um, our uh, ceramics department takes up like an entire floor um, of this uh, uh, building. Um, so it's not just important as, you know, on paper, it's, it's really important, um, you know, just as a, as a facility on our campus. Um, going on about that, there's, I think we have one of the only two photo development um, uh, black rooms like in the state. I think we're one of the only two um, campuses that has these, uh, the ability to actually develop from film to photos. And so that's one of the classes that you can take at Green River College if you're kind of interested in, in photography as well. So um, again, it's very important. The staff and the, and the um, uh, teachers at, at Green River College are excellent. Many of them have been with us for, for many, many years. Um, very friendly. I myself uh, try to stay in contact with them as much as possible. So usually about once a year or, or maybe twice a year, I kind of get together and we just get caught up. Um, you know, I ask them any questions that students have been sending my way um, and they get, get me caught up um, as far as, you know, what's going on with classes and uh, what's kind of going on out in the world of art and design. So uh, a lot of what I would advise you is coming directly from your instructors and, and they really know what they're talking about. So uh, again, art and design, really, really robust and really, really popular and, and well-supported major um, uh, when you're studying it at Green River College. So one question we get asked quite often is um, what classes do I take or, or what classes do I start off with? And so this can get very, very detailed. So I'll try to keep it as, um, you know, as, uh, as simple as possible. Um, but the first two classes that you would be looking at would be um, what Art 105 and Art 109. Art 105 is beginning drawing and Art 109 is beginning design. And um, it doesn't really, I mean, whether you're doing design, uh, you know, uh, painting, architecture, um, everybody's starting with these two classes. Um, they're basically the foundation of everything you're gonna do later. So Art 105 is basic drawing, it's kind of learning sketching and, and shading. Art 109, um, uh, excuse me, Art 105 is basic drawing, Art 109 is basic design. Um, it's actually, everything is done in black and white. Um, and there is work on a computer. I believe it's with um, Illustrator and Photoshop. 
uh, but there is some sketching done in this class as well. Um, but again, that's kind of the foundation classes that you're going to be looking at. Um, going from there, I have many, many design students, so I'm going to try to kind of focus on that for this first part. From there, um, we then have Art 110, which is intermediate design. That's going to now add color into design, um, color theory. Um, Art 119 is our 3D design class, and this class is not 3D design like on a computer. This is 3D design like building things out of materials in real life. And um, every quarter uh, in this class, students build things out of different materials, whether it's um, uh, things out of nature, like bark and wood. Um, some quarters, it's maybe building things out of like aluminum cans, um, but it's very cool. They all get displayed around the campus. And so it's really a chance not only to do something creative, but then to get uh, positive feedback from it from everybody else who, who sees it um, every quarter. It's, it's always great. Um, Art 120 is another class that we have. This is intro to graphic design. So obviously anybody who's interested in graphic design, this is the class that I'm gonna recommend for you. Um, where you're gonna get a lot of those basic graphic design um, uh, foundations that you're gonna need. Um, now I've listed a lot of classes here and, and these are not hard and fast rules that you must take this or that. Um, it really depends on what you wanna do, what kind of major you wanna be transferring into. Uh, and, and also what schools you're thinking of looking at going to. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, but just so to round everything out, we do offer a lot of other classes, Pottery, Art 114. Um, I have a lot of students take that for studio credit. Um, Art 111 is our watercoloring uh, class that starts with 111, goes to 112. Um, we have uh, Art 140, which is an intro to animation class. And so if you're interested in in animation and going that way um, with your career. That can be another great class. Uh, digital illustration, um, uh, as I mentioned, photography. Uh, we also have classes to help you build a portfolio. So art uh, students are a bit uh, unique in transferring. Um, a lot of other majors, you kind of take your classes, do the prerequisites, you know, you do good in your classes, you try to transfer to business or computer science or what have you. Art is unique in that not only do you have to take these classes, but then you have to put together a portfolio. And this portfolio is very important because it can sometimes make or break your application to get into a, a certain program. Um, so we actually have a class, Art 180, and the whole purpose of this class is to help you put together a portfolio um, for transferring uh, or for uh, you know, getting into another school or even when you're out in the job market looking for jobs. So um, yeah, a, a wide variety of classes to really help and support you in, in, in every facet. Um, now I do have to mention that art is um, also one of, the, one of the programs where a lot of these classes are only offered once a year. And so it's very important that if you are going to go into one of these majors, um, please, please, please meet with me as soon as you can. And um, it's very easy to make an appointment with me, but it's very important that you understand exactly when to be taking these classes. If you miss it once one year, uh, then you might have to wait an entire year before it's offered again, um, or you just may miss the opportunity to take it. So it's very important um, for art students that you have an ed plan ready to go. Um, so the next thing uh, that we often get asked a lot is, well, where do students actually transfer to? Um, and again, it, this is kind of a little bit different with art and design students. Um, and so to, to kind of simple, simply break it down, um, there are your traditional four-year universities, like probably many students have been looking at or will be looking at. Um, and this includes things like University of Washington, Seattle, um, and, and many of those schools in Washington and across the US. Um, and then there are also very specific art schools. And at these art schools, uh, very much you are studying art and so is everybody else. There's not really a lot of, um, you know, like accounting majors uh, at these schools. So um, I'll start there. And probably one of the top schools that we transfer students to is um, SCAD. This is the Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, I bring them up just because they are a good partner of ours. I transfer many students there every year. And um, we do have a very uh, set transfer agreement. And so I can tell you exactly how classes are going to transfer over to um, a school like SCAD. 
but having said that, there are, are many, many, many um, art schools that our students go to. Um, many students look at FIT, which is the Fashion Institute of Technology. Um, there's Pratt and Parsons, the new school. Uh, these are all in New York, and those three kind of go together. Usually students apply to all three. They don't just apply to one of them. Um, and uh, very all very high ranking schools, very well known. Um, there's a lot of other art schools. There's the Ringling School of Art and Design um, in Florida, I believe. Um, I have a student right now who's interested in Rhode Island School of Design. This is the number one design school in the US. Um, the uh, Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising is another school. And so these, again, these kind of fall into this art side of um, the, the pool. And uh, these are great schools, again, really good facilities, very focused. Um, a lot of the instructors at these schools may be adjunct, meaning um, they only teach part-time, but that's because the other times they're actually out in the art world, whether it's fashion design or game design, and they're, they're kind of straddling um, you know, both of those jobs. And so they come in and teach, but then they're also out there um, uh, actually you know, maybe managing a company or something like that. Uh, on the other side of things, there are four-year universities. Um, one of them that's very popular for fashion design is Kent State. Um, I think they're ranked number four or something if you're interested in competitiveness and rank. Um, and so that can be, uh, there are a lot of four-year universities that students can also look at. Um, graphic design, I have students who transfer to uh, Central Washington University. They have a, a very good graphic design program um, and they're a very affordable school. Uh, you can get very good scholarships there um, with uh, a high GPA. Um, recently, I've even had students who are interested in looking at uh, Canadian universities um, and they offer a lot of art there as well. So um, uh, architecture students, I don't want to forget architecture students. Um, I have a lot of students, University of Minnesota Twin Cities, um, University of Oregon, Illinois Institute of Technology. Uh, these are all schools that I've actually transferred students to for these architecture programs. So um, many, many, many opportunities for transfer uh, in the art and design major. Um, I brought it up before, but just to really emphasize um, the portfolio again is gonna be very important when you go to do this transfer. So that's gonna come back to your classes and um, you know, doing good work in those classes that you're gonna have to draw on to build that portfolio from. Um, there's no one set portfolio. So every school can be very different. Um, some schools I've seen, they say 15 pieces and you choose, you know, you go, you, you show us what you think is your best work. I've seen other schools that say five pieces of landscape, five pieces, you know, of sketches of people, and then five, you know, you get to go and choose yourself. Um, so it, it, there really is no one set way of doing a portfolio. Um, but that's also why uh, I, we have you do a variety of foundation classes here that so you have a lot to draw on when that portfolio um, uh, finally needs to be turned in. Uh, these portfolios are usually submitted online. Um, a lot of schools use a, um, a, uh, a program called um, Slideshow and everything gets uploaded and then it goes to the school like that. Um, as I mentioned, we have that Art 180 class, which is the artist's portfolio class. And that's where we help you put, um, put that together. Um, okay, so I'm just uh, glancing at my notes here. Um, the next thing that often comes up is what are the different areas of art and design that you can study? Um, there's a lot. I mean, design really goes, uh, it, you know, I mean, almost anything that we use, you know, whether it's computers, phones, those are very obvious, but also furniture, um, automobiles. So uh, you've got interior design, um, you've got product design, fashion design, graphic design. Uh, recently, what's very popular is UX design or user interface design. So, you know, um, when you're using a computer, uh, how do we design an interface that's, you know, easy for people to um, uh, use and, and kind of interact with? So um, all of those kinds of things are, are very, very popular. Um, architecture, I'd mentioned, is, is uh, also, I have many students who come in looking at architecture. Um, uh, many film students come in, um, uh, film, both film production and acting. Um, so there's uh, many good schools for those majors. Um, 
yeah, I think I, I mean, I could probably go on and on about that, but um, I'll, I'll go on and, and talk a little bit about some of the differences. And so what is design um, exactly? And in general, design means you're, you're creating something that people are going to use or observe. It's going to be observed by the people. Um, and what that means is, you know, you, you need to have a background, not just in art, but sometimes even in things, you know, kind of going back to user interface design, things like even psychology might come into play. Um, you know, when you're designing something that people are going to be using, you know, looking at all the time, um, that can be very important as well. Um, obviously there's, there's maybe more, uh, I guess what people might think is traditional, like character design and, um, you know, set design, um, animation, game design. These are also kind of very um, kind of new and, and I won't even say up and coming because they're, they're clearly here. Um, but these are also majors and that a lot of my students come in and study and, and look at. Um, kind of jumping off of that, um, you know, after you've gone to Green River College, transferred and you graduate, um, you know, now you're kind of going out into the real world. And, and so what does that look like? And so as of right now, it's, it's very difficult for me to say um, exactly what the job outlook is. Things are kind of all over the place, I think, for everybody in a lot of industries. Um, but I would say um, uh, definitely there are certain parts of art uh, or design that have probably been hit harder. I know that the entertainment industry um, has, has been shut down. I think it's starting to open back up again. Um, but even having said that, there's a lot of art and design that is done you know, on computers and it's done, it can be done online. Um, so I think uh, you know, even if you're you know, living in another country, you could still be doing an art and des design kind of job online. Um, going beyond that, uh, one of the tips that I would have really about art and design and eventually going into the field and eventually working is number one, you really have to be honest with yourself. Um, art or design is not a major like a lot of other majors, um, in, in my opinion. I feel like art and design is something you really, uh, you put a lot of yourself into it. Um, and so sometimes when you're doing things for yourself, uh, or for yourself, that can be very rewarding. Um, to take that and turn it into a job, and now you're kind of expected to do it eight hours a day, 40 hours a week, um, and you might not be creating what you want to create. Uh, you know, a lot of times you have a customer who's saying, you know, this is what I need. Um, and, you know, maybe it's not the funnest thing in the world, but, you know, that's going to be your job. So I encourage students to be very honest with themselves and say, you know, I, I really love doing this. I really love, you know, animation um, and you're doing it for yourself and that's great. Are you going to be okay doing it, you know, again, eight hours a day, uh, 40 hours a week uh, for somebody else? You know, do you love it enough that you are gonna be okay animating maybe somebody else's idea or maybe not doing things exactly as uh, you would want to do them? Um, if that's you, then then that's awesome. And uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a hundred percent exactly, but um, I just uh, I, I do sometimes want to be honest with students and say, you know, these these are jobs, and so um, they're not always going to be fun. And I think a lot of times uh, students come into it as a hobby or, or a skill that they have, and that's awesome. But uh, to then move that into a career um, can be a very different thing. So just you know, be honest with yourself um, is one of my first uh, tips. Um, and then one of the second tips that I would have is um, uh, start doing it now. Um, there's, no, there's no requirement that says you must graduate from Green River College or you must take these classes or, or you have to get your bachelor's degree. All of these things are going to help you. All of these things are going to help you increase your skills, increase your talent, make you more marketable when you go out to the workplace. Um, but at the same time, I think kind of going back to loving it, um, go ahead and start doing it now. If you're interested in animation, um, you know, go grab a, an animation program and start doing something and, you know, put it up on YouTube. Um, we have a, a student who um, I think just, uh, I don't know, a few months ago, maybe a month or two ago, he won um, this uh, kind of COVID, uh, you know, stuck indoors movie contest. And we ask students to make movies from home. And he made this incredible stop motion animation uh, movie. And um, what I learned more after I talked to him a bit is that he's been doing this for fun um, for a long time. 
And so, you know, he already had kind of a, a portfolio and he already had a lot of experience built up and he's not doing it for a class. He's not doing it, you know, necessarily to get into any school. Uh, he's doing it because he loves it. And I encourage you, go out and start doing that. Um, if you like character design, you know, build a website or, or um, you know, start building your stories and, and getting it all written down. Um, uh, these are all things, again, that you can use in a portfolio too. It doesn't, your portfolio is not limited to what you've done in class. Your portfolio is any work that you've done. And so, uh, doing those things that you love and then maybe taking the skills you've used or, or that you've learned in the classes you're taking um, will just you know bump up the quality of what you're doing so don't be afraid start start doing things now there's no reason to wait um, if this is you know if art or design is, is what you want to be doing um, finally i just wanted to talk a, a little bit about some specific examples of some students um, who have, who have been really successful with their transfer from Green River College. Um, just uh, this year, I transferred one of our students, Jay, he got into Parsons um, at the, in New York, and which is a very competitive school to get into. Um, but uh, he was a great student, came and talked to me. I think I talked to Jay every quarter. Uh, he came in and was, you know, am I taking the right classes? Am I, is everything looking good? He did really well in his classes. He had a very high GPA. Um, but he also was kind of taking a lot of what I said and he was doing his own thing, um, you know, uh, on his own time. So there really is a, a lot to be said for um, planning ahead and, and doing things on your own. Um, another student of mine, Thun, uh, very similar story, came in and talked to me a lot. Uh, she's an architecture major. She just transferred to the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Um, and I think she's going to do really, really well there. Um, again, she uh, studied very hard, got very good grades while she was here, um, and then worked a lot on her skills, even outside of the classroom and, and outside of uh, class. Um, beyond that, there, there are um, many more success stories. Uh, like I said, I've, I transfer students to um, many, many different art schools and many different um, art programs um, every year. Uh, I have a student who went to the Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. She um, had done OPT for 12 months in New York. So she came from Green River, graduated, uh, worked in fashion for a year in New York, and then went on to her um, four-year school. So uh, yeah, there's a lot of opportunities for students. Um, it does require that you come in and you know you got to work hard and, and you've got to want it. Um, but uh, if you're doing that, meeting with me, meeting with your advisor, yeah, a lot of open roads for you. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, open it up now to students and um, any questions. I think uh, I think Lansing is going to be moderating us. So um, I'll let some of those pour in here. Okay. I don't see, oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> I feel Lansing is now posting some questions in the comments. I'll give it another maybe 30 seconds here and then if not, we can finish up. Okay. Well, very cool. Uh, thank you. Every, thank you everybody for um, tuning in and watching. Um, if you need to contact me or get a hold of me, my email address is zwilliams at greenriver.edu. Um, that's going to be the best way to get a hold of me. 
And um, again, any questions about art and design, um, definitely send them my way. Uh, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. And everybody have a good night.